everyone welcome to the science stuff today we are going to be learning about joints and the different types in our body so what exactly are joints let's find out the point at which two separate bones meet is called a joint the shape of a joint depends on its function a joint is also known as an articulation the three major categories of joints in our body are immobile joints, partially mobile joints, and freely mobile joints. First, let's look at the immovable joints. In these joints, movement is not possible. They are also called synarthrodial joints. One good example of this joint is the structures between the bones of the cranium as seen here. Another type of joints are the partially mobile joints. Here, very little or partial movement occurs between two bones. This joint can also be called an amphiarthrosis. Examples are the joint between the rib and the breastbone which can be seen here and the joints between the vertebrae. Now, let's look at the freely movable joints. In this joint, varying degrees of movement occurs between two bones. These joints are also called diarthrosis joints and synovial joints. The four major types of mobile joints we are going to look into this video are gliding joints, pivot joints, hinge joints, and ball and socket joints. Now I want to just tell you a small note here. The condyloid and saddle joints are also synovial joints, but we are not looking through them in this video. Now let's look at the first type of synovial joint the gliding joint. This joint is also called as a planar joint. Gliding joints allow the bones to glide past one another in any direction along the plane of the joint, up and down, left and right, and diagonally. It occurs between the bones of the wrists, the ankle, and between the vertebrae. Now let's look at the pivot joint. Pivot joints, also known as rotary joints, are a type of synovial joint that permit axial rotation. Here, one bone rotates over a pivot-like end of another bone. One example is the first and the second vertebrae of the neck that allows the head to move back and forth as seen here. Here, the first vertebrae is known as the atlas, while the second one is known as the axis. Another common movable joint is the hinge joint. The hinge joint is a joint that allows movement in one plane, like the hinge of a door. These joints usually give sufficient power. Examples are the elbow joint between the humerus and the ulna, knee joint, and the joints between fingers. Here we can see the humerus and the radius in the ulna and the elbow joint here. And here we can see the interphalangeal joints which are also hinge joints. Now let's look at the ball and socket joint. The ball and socket joint or spheroid joint is a type of synovial joint in which the ball-shaped surface of one rounded bone fits into the cup-like depression of another bone. This joint provides greater freedom of motion than any other type of joint. Examples are the shoulder joints and the hip joints. In the shoulder joint, we can see the head of the humerus fit into a socket called as the glenoid cavity. This is a picture of the hip joint. Here. We can see this part labeled as the tabulum. And this is the deep socket which the femur fits in. Now, let's look at some properties of synovial joints. 
As we already know, all the freely movable joints are synovial joints. These joints allow a considerable degree of movement. The special requirements for these joints are 1. They should be firmly held in place. 2. The surfaces coming in contact should be well lubricated to remove friction. This lubricating fluid is known as the synovial fluid. So this joint is called a synovial joint because of the synovial fluid. Now, let's look at the structure of a synovial joint. Here, I have taken the knee joint as reference. As we already know, the knee joint is a synovial joint. In this joint, the strong ligaments hold it in place. These ligaments prevent dislocation. In this image, these are the ligaments. The knee is also well protected by fibrous capsules. They are composed of thick fibrous connective tissue which form a protective sleeve around the joint. Here, this is the fibrous capsule. This capsule also limits unnecessary movement. The synovial fluid is contained in a sac formed of a thin synovial membrane. This fluid serves as a lubricant. The fibrous capsule and the synovial membrane together are known as the articular capsule. Now, let's do a recap on the classification of joints. So first we saw what joints are. Then we saw the three types, immovable joints, partially mobile joints, and freely mobile joints. Then we saw that these freely mobile joints are split into gliding joints, pivot joints, hinge joints, and ball and socket joints. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below on what topic you want me to do next. And you're watching the science stuff.